are still standing up. I'm Craig Shoemaker. That's Rick Thorne, our special guest. Can't wait to dive into this, and you should stay with us. You know, I was born in 1969, so, you know, in the 70s, dads were a lot different. And, like, you know, I've been a single dad, and I've had my yeah, kids more. Right. Uh, in the last 12 years, I got divorced 12 years ago for the third time, and I told myself, I'm not going to keep chasing this type of girl. I'm not going right. to, I need to change. We talked about that. Good for you. And so, yeah, yeah and so so it's, it's just kind of like, you know, when I was a kid, the dads were looked at as deadbeats, okay? They were and, called deadbeat and, dads. And, and, and maybe they were, and maybe they were, maybe they were, I don't know. But what I realized in life is being a father and the way I look, and I've manned up and I've had my kids pretty right. much the whole time yeah. and raised them, and their mom's in the picture, but I, they've been with me more. Bottom line, mm -hmm. and I've had no family to help. They're all in the Midwest. Same so I said, yeah. and I had no girl, and I did it myself. But dads aren't deadbeats, and I'm so sick of hearing that because I'm living proof that I'm not a deadbeat. I've actually met some deadbeat moms. So, but you never hear that term. Yeah. So don't. Have you ever heard a term deadbeat mom? No. And no. so don't think for a second that guys are always these bad people. That's because, the. That's the I, problem. I, I had three. <laughs> I had three wives cheat on me. So you tell me it's the, who, it, what the difference. Yeah, but you're gonna get the label. I mean? You'll you'll get the label. Yeah, because I look. It's the always guy the guy who's the cat, or is it the guys. As a matter of fact, as soon as I got divorced, I go, "What'd you do?" Honest to God, I heard more people go, "What'd you do?" <laughs> like, like it's got to be you. Yeah, of course. It can't be dude, the female. Dude, imagine lining me up to yeah. like. You know, uh, my last. I mean, I mean I'm just gonna make for the record. I'm cool with everybody. I'm cool with my my ex. Me yeah. and her are cool. We yeah. get along. We have a problem. But she's she's a beautiful blonde Brazilian girl. Line her up next to me. Yeah. And you're gonna just go. Make what did he do? Make assumptions. Yeah. But it wasn't the case. And right. so you know we assume a lot, and and you get looked at a certain way. Uh, but I told myself like I don't really care what people think. I care about my kids, and I I sacrificed a lot to raise them on my own. Yeah. And do it on my own, and I'm glad I did because I, my dad left us, and I didn't want to be a fucking deadbeat dad. Do you know yeah, what I mean? I, yeah. didn't, I didn't want to there's, be. There's that. advantages to it. Yeah. Uh, and I'll tell you what. One of that's the that's just my personality. Though. My I don't dad, give up. My dad know? made made me a better dad. There you go. I looked to. I this is how I raise the kids. I give them everything I long for, which is really easy to access. I don't know about you, but I I have such memories of the abandonment. Yeah. Like such memories of n looking up in the stands and everybody else had a dad there, no dad. Have kids having catches with their dads. I mean, my next door neighbor, I used to, I used to be so angry. He used to say, "My dad, my dad, my." All he said was, "My dad" all the time. Yeah, I couldn't say that. My dad would pop around every few years or whatever it was, and not with good messaging. So I try to give these kids, or I do give these kids, not even try. I give these kids good messaging. Yep, and it's based on a lot of what not to do. Yeah. So sometimes they're giving us a great education by that. And by the yeah. way, the opposite is true, too. I give my kids everything. And I would I'd like to say right now that two of them, at least, didn't go so well for that reason. Become spoiled and entitled and uh, nasty yeah, yeah. and resentful. Yeah, and you're they're right. Not, they're not picking up the things that I would rather them pick up. They didn't face the struggles that you face. Exactly. And I have the same. Me and you have a lot in common because I'm not sitting here beating up on anybody. Guys, girls, my dad, my mom, eh, you know, blah, right. blah, blah. Yeah. I'm an adult and I've learned a lot. And so the thing is, is that I'm happy that I turned out the way I did because for me, I led to bike riding and I wanted something and I found that. And things were handed to me. The difference I do with my kids, my son's a hardcore football player and my daughter plays lacrosse. And they're both very outgoing and very smart. And I tell them, even though I joke in my stand-up, I always talk and show my kids, but it's just for fun. But I tell my son, like, you're not entitled to anything. You're not. There's no rule book. Like, you know, I see, like, in some sports, like, go to this, get involved with this and this trainer and go to here and do this, and therefore you're going to make it here. It's like, no, you need to come up with your own program. Nobody owes you anything, bro. Yeah. You're a, The world's competitive, not just football. Right. Life is. You know what I mean? And I talk to my kids with those Midwest roots that I, I'm from. And values. And, yeah, and, be, yeah. and being a, and a victim, not a victim, but like being in a situation where, you know, my dad left and my mom was working in a factory and, you know, it, was, it was, well, wasn't the, the ideal. But of, your perspective is not to be a victim. Right, right. Because a victim victim mentality will keep you there. You'll repeat that yeah. again and again and again. And you guys, we both of us have rose above. Exactly. We, we were not destined for this. No, no. We've had both had big careers, done very, very well, yep. and very happy. Yep. And that's the best thing is just having that vibration of happiness. Again, that's why I had you in here. I was like, wow, this dude's guy. Like, like, you walked in that room at Corolla's. Like, this is my kind of guy. Awesome. And you got through your adversity. Yeah. And because you got nothing to lose, bro. No, it's, if you're breathing, you, you and you I got both know we got nothing to lose nothing because to lose. we know where the bottom is. Yeah, you know. And I, I went through, you know, I, I 
suicide attempt and wow oh yeah drug and alcohol addiction all of that stuff anything to get out of this body i didn't want to be in this body wow i used to have a dream when i was younger that i would die and i would be able to go to my own funeral though and watch the people regret how they treated me that was like oh, one of my, that was one of my visions because you wanted that attention i wanted yeah of course not not being an amazing, everyone likes attention i like attention my kids like attention everyone yeah. everyone likes attention some, to some degree but yeah. i get it bro you know the difference between me and you is that i never did any drugs I've never done any drugs. Wow. Yeah. Most people are like, you're out of your mind. I'm like, never. And I've never, uh, I didn't drink alcohol. That was 27. Mm -hmm. And that was like, maybe just like a little bit. And I went through a little stint of drinking. There really wasn't like six weeks or something. I'm like, oh, I don't want to do six this. Six weeks. You know what I mean? <laughs> like in my whole, in my whole, in my whole life. Uh, and I, and, and I, I That's never, crazy. I, I never, don't think anybody's going to do an intervention on you. <laughs> no, but I never, I never did any weeks, of that. Sir. And a lot of people don't believe me, but, but, uh, what saved me was, was I got lucky in a sense because I found bike riding. And so that yeah. gave me the feeling I needed of like independence and feeling like empowered and like it's another form could, of spirituality. I could be something. Right? I could I could overcome this through riding. And that's kind of when you say that it's another form of spirituality. hundred percent. Like your deity, if you will, is a ride or succeeding in that. And that's where you get your you're fulfilled and you get your purpose. Yeah. People always think you need to just go one route. Go to a church, go to a synagogue, go to a, a mosque, whatever it is, and that's your only way to enlightenment. No, sit on a rock in Sedona. No, you're having your your enlightenment every time you ride and succeed in that oh, ride yeah, and feel yeah. victorious. Even when you're not victorious, you learn something. Just being out, man. That, yeah. And, and now I've transferred that into music, into comedy, into acting. And comedy's so spiritual as well. You're telling so the truth. Good. Yeah, yeah, you're connecting with your truth. Yep. Yep. And this is what I would encourage anyone to do is find what your truth is, what your passion is. Yeah. And then and dive into that. And yeah. then you'll find your spirit and yep. your purpose. Yep. And you'll feel fulfilled. That's I don't think a lot of people understand because we're not taught this. <laughs> we're just but, not. But you've not, learned you've it, learned through the situation, so then you could share that. Because a lot of people don't know these things unless you, you know, you're able to share your story. But yeah, man, I mean you you I I, I have a theory of that just start. Because some people say to me, like, you do all these things, and yeah, and, and I'm like, because yeah. I just start, and like an opportunity comes, and I take the opportunity, and I figure it out. You know, it's like when I started, because I hosted TV shows for a long time when X mm -hmm. Games was really it came out. Like, what are these guys doing? And I did that ten years of that for ESPN, NBC, MTV, a lot of stuff. And then that went to acting, and then that went to music, and that went to other things. And so people would always be like how can you do all these things? Don't you ride bikes anymore? Or don't you host anymore? And I was like, I just took the opportunity and figured it out. Like I got an acting gig. So I went to acting school. I wanted to sing. So I, 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 I want to, re I, I want to reframe that a little you bit. You know what I mean though? You well, know what I mean? I want to reframe Just this. start. You, what you did was you tapped into what we all are abundance. Yeah. There's no limits. There's no yep. boxes. Other people need the boxes. Other people need to put you in a box. Yeah. To make sure that you are just that thing. You're just BMX. Your, whatever it is, they need that for themselves. So they understand it's, it's a projection. They, yeah. But they don't understand how they're all unlimited. Everyone's unlimited. I'll look at the camera. Everybody, you are all unlimited. Unlimited, yes. We have all the power we need inside of us. It's, it's, it's potency possesses, is possessed inside of us. It wishes to be released, and you and I will release it in anything we do. You have to. You don't, you, you know, we're doing a podcast now. You'll go do comedy tonight. You'll play in a band. I'll jump in on a band, even though no Let's one Let's go, bro. I no need a tambourine player. You play tambourine? <laughs> on the triangle. <laughs> you should see me on the triangle. Let's go. <laughs> the no, but yeah, man. You I, gotta... I dominate on the isosceles. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you know, that's, that's funny. But you know, all the things we're talking about, uh, you know, I forget things that I do. Like, it's not like I wake up and brush my teeth and go, oh, he's on MTV Cribs. Yeah. yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, sure. I, for, I forget. Because I never feel like like the 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 curse is well, not really a curse, but I never feel like it's enough. Meaning that like I did that cool. What's next? What's next? A good friend of mine told me one time. He's like, not that I don't appreciate it and 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 enjoy it the moment, yeah. but like you you're working on a project, or you're doing something, and you know this is going to end. So you're thinking like, what's next to stay in in this world that we're in of entertainment? And for me, I just feel like I'm never satisfied. Meaning that like I constantly need to express myself in some form or fashion and you know i told my son this i'm like you never graduate it's not like i graduated as bmx and i'm sitting over the time you graduate is when you can't do it anymore and you don't want to do it anymore and so for me i never feel like like not that i'm not good enough because i know i am it's just that like i feel like i could always be better 
You know what I mean? You can always be better at anything, of yeah. course. Yeah. But, but uh, here's what I've learned. It's not like though. I'm sitting there going, I did all this shit, so there, therefore this. I'm like, no, I don't no, feel. No, never. I still don't feel complete. It's Matter weird. of fact, the times I've won awards are some of the loneliest times of my life. Mm. Because I get there and I go, this is it. Because then it's next. Yeah, all these fake people around that's you. Why no, I don't bro, seek, that's up? why I don't seek anymore. I just seek internal, internal bliss. And if I can be centered in those spots and whatever's next is next, be present. I'm in this interview with you right now. I'm nowhere else. I have no agenda. Yep. Don't need to be anywhere. Don't need to impress yep. anybody. Don't need to lure anybody in. It's just you and me with your energy coming with my energy. And I wanted to tell you something that I read that uh, you're a <coughs> Hank Williams fan. Is that correct? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I am going to give you one of your prizes. I'm going to introduce you to one of my very close friends is his granddaughter. Oh, no way. Yes. Let's and I go. I stay with her in Nashville. So if you ever go to Nashville, we're going to go hang with Hillary Williams. She's awesome. Oh, I've dude. I've on my podcast as well. She's well, Hank the Third. The Hank the Third. You mean we, the second. Oh, oh, the third. third her yeah. brother. Yeah. yeah. And there's actually a Hank Four, too. But Hank the Third, uh, he, you should check him out. He had a, a, oh, no. A, he looks just like the grandfather. He does. He doesn't but, look like the father. He's like the grand, it's crazy. But Hank the Third's more like he's he's a legend, man. Like me and him, we, we converse. We know each other kind of on oh, the so gram. Oh, okay. Well, but, but we don't, we, I've never, like, we don't hang out or anything. So, like, we kind of, like, like each other's posts and comments and yeah. stuff like that. He's more kind of like a... Uh, I, I love them. I love all the Hanks, actually. All of them. There's just, yeah. It's in their bloodline. And you're also man. an Elvis guy. And yep. My, one of my first friends in Los Angeles was, was his daughter, Lisa. Yeah, really? Passed away. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. And uh, that was one of my fr- So it's really odd. And, and I was never that big of an Elvis guy, but I would hang with her all the time and the whole gang. And there's a whole gang of us. I hung with, believe it or not, talk about not labeling people. I hung with a load of Scientologists. Oh, okay. None of them ever came on to me. I was actually a little insecure about it. I called one of them actually last year. I go, how come you guys never came on to me? <laughs> because cause you don't seem like you need it. Yeah. So I'm not going to label them as some cult or whatever it is. And I'm sure that, but there's whatever bad you're eggs everywhere. Yep. Whatever you're in, there's bad eggs in BMX, I'm sure. There's bad eggs in comedy for sure. Of course. Right? There's, uh, but you can't just label the whole thing like that. Rick Thorne, how fast did that go? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, folks. He's a lot more compelling. What? What? Huh? Where am I? Where am I? It went. Yeah. No, that was fast. That went fast, and it, hopefully, uh, you're all going to get something out of it. What a conversation that was. Stay it's rad. Still, it's still standing. That's right. You're saying you didn't say that the entire time. I stay just did. rad. Yeah, okay? stay rad. Yeah. All right. Mine's uh, stay bad. No, yours is still standing, and mine is stay <laughs> rad. So put them together. <laughs> Still standing rad. No, st- a- I'm still standing and staying rad. And we're staying rad. All right. Yeah. All right. That's it.